Welcome to the Blues Asia Network on UR Face Radio. Your host, Tom Cat Coleman. The only source covering blues across Asia and the Pacific. The chip of train rolling, steady cross the land. We're going to jump on the train really fast tonight because uh, we've got so much to cover that we're going to take our theme song out here and uh, tell you what we're going to be doing tonight. Um, actually, we've got tonight the most significant show uh, that we've done up till now, and uh, it's appropriate that it's coming at the beginning of the year. Um over the last few months, I can't tell you how many uh, people, both blues musicians and blues bands, uh, complain to me, why isn't Asia m- more noticed in the blues world? <laughs> and why don't Asian bands get invited to blues festivals <laughs> in Europe and the United States? Well, I tell you, we're going to... We're going to talk about that tonight in a way that suggests, hey, this is what we got to do out here to get ourselves noticed. Yeah. And so we're going to be talking about two things. We're going to be uh, talking, first of all, about uh, our participation in the blues world, and we're also going to be talking about encouraging the young bands. Yeah. To get on board the blues train. So yeah. that's our agenda for the evening yeah. tonight, <laughs> folks. And we've got uh, just a lot uh, coming up. So let's get right on with it. And um, the um, uh, we're going to start off with an announcement. We've hinted at this and, and uh, in past shows, but tonight we're really going to lay the cards on the table. <laughs> and the Philippine Blues Society is this year sponsoring a band, the Blue Rascals, and they will be participating in the International Blues Challenge in the youth division in Memphis. And if you follow the show, I guess you've figured that out by now. And uh, anyway, uh we here at, at uh, Blues Asia TV consider this a major deal, uh, particularly for Southeast Asia, uh, because uh, uh, in Southeast Asia we have not often gotten onto that blues stage. And we're going to talk a little bit about the significance of that tonight. But anyway, the Blue Rascals are going to be participating uh, at starting on the 31st of January. And there are a couple of other announcements I can now share with you. Um, I guess because the Philippine Blues Society and the Blue Rascals are the new kids on the block, the Blue Rascals are going to open the very first program at IBC, (laughs) and it's the FedEx International Showcase. And who is the opening band? The Blue Rascals from the Philippines. That's very cool. (laughs) And, of course, then they will participate in the youth division. That happens on uh, Friday, February 3rd. And then we just learned today that uh, Paul Labrera, the guitarist, and probably even his bandmates, they have been invited to perform 
at B.B. King's on Saturday night. They will be joining on stage the Will Tucker Blues Band. And the Will Tucker Blues Band happens to have been the youth division winner last year. Yeah, I know Will Tucker. Yeah, Yeah. you've you've, uh, checked them out, huh? And anyway, that's scheduled for Saturday night. Uh, So uh, at least... Uh, there's going to be some action in the blues world with all these blues bands coming in and blues promoters and record labels, and they're going to get some idea of what's happening in Southeast Asia. Exactly. And then, of course, we've already been talking last week yeah. about the bands from New Zealand and uh, Australia. Yeah, Thailand. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so uh, this is a way to make a mark. Uh, is, you know, to get off our our fat behinds <laughs> and get out there. Yeah, pick your instruments. Uh, yeah, yeah, take your instruments and participate. <laughs> uh, now, it's interesting that uh, all of this started, uh, at least for us here in the Philippines, it started back on June the 4th of last year, and we happened to have a video of the event where all of this stuff about the rascals and IBC started simmering. Let's take a look. Okay. Let's check this out. Okay. And what you're about to see is the new generation. This will be the future of the blues in the Philippines. And you'll discover it's in very good hands. <laughs> Let's introduce the guys. That's uh, Spencer on bass. Yeah. yeah. Spencer the Dispenser. Yes, and Darwin on the drums. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you can see him laughing at this, this ring right here. But uh, we're going to play louder so everyone can hear you. What do you think? Okay. And then, of course, we got Paul Marty Labrera. Paul Marty Labrera. Hang on, because we got another guest artist that you'll be hearing in just a few minutes. And uh, hey, this night's just beginning. This is beginning. Yeah, Michael Bourne.
Yeah, okay. <laughs> now, uh, we here at Blues Asia Network are really proud that uh, we're the ones who organized that uh, event. And Michael had never met Paul or the Rascals. That and, jam. And, and yet that uh, jam was just magnificent. And <clears throat> I was driving Michael back to the hotel after the gig, and he said, that kid needs to go to Memphis. <laughs> and that's how it all Began. started. Wow. <laughs> now, <clears throat> I'm sure there are a lot of other <clears throat> uh, bands, and mu blues musicians scattered around Asia that are equally good yeah. and would benefit equally as much by participating in the International Blues Challenge. There are some of my friends from Facebook, sir, that messaging me about the International Blues Challenge of how they will, <coughs> how they can participate to the... Okay. Well, listen up, folks, because you're going <laughs> to learn. That's uh, one of the things we're doing tonight is to get into the innards of how you go about doing that. Now, it just so happens that Michael Bourne was back in town a week ago, and we collared him, and we were able to get him into the studio here. It wasn't during our broadcast time, so we recorded uh, our conversation with him, and uh, <clears throat> we're going to be dipping in and out of that interview. And let's uh, uh, check in with him right away, just so he gets to introduce himself and you get to know a little bit more about who is Michael Bourne. Okay. Uh, here in town, over at the Roadhouse Manila Bay, and we've grabbed him and dragged him over to the studio so we could talk a little bit. At a very early hour. At a very <laughs> early hour for our blues <laughs> man. <laughs> And uh, anyway, the major reason I wanted to grab Michael is because he has participated last year, and he'll be participating within a few weeks in the International Blues Challenge, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. They're the largest gathering of uh, blues musicians in the world. Yeah. I, I guess that's true. Uh, this year, I, I did a count, and they're going to be... Over 200 acts yeah. in Memphis over four days. On one street, Beale Street. On Beale Street, Historic. yeah. Uh, <clears throat> tell me just a little bit about Beale Street. Why is Beale Street important for the blues? Well, that, that was the, um, and I'm not a historian, but that was the, the, the stopping place, number one, before um, when people were coming up from the south in the, the early days of the blues. Um, it was the city there that was the pipeline that led to Chicago and all, all the great um, performers that we all know from the blues records, Alan Wolf and, and those guys stopped through Memphis, B.B. King of course you might recognize that guy I've heard <laughs> of him yeah. had a, a radio show much like yours <laughs> <laughs> on uh, Beale Street and um, music was just really alive during that time and and that, that street became synonymous with, with blues. Okay. And it's still a major street. What, yeah. uh, what, and how many clubs? Do you have any idea how many clubs there are on Bill Street? That... I'd say there's probably 20 or 30 <laughs> a day, just with a two-block span. You know, uh, can find any kind of um, blues you want. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, we're going to explore more about uh, the International Blues Challenge uh, from somebody who knows it firsthand, but uh, uh, we're going to go back and, and listen to one of the participants that will be competing uh, in February. Uh, so we'll do that, then we'll come back and resume this interview, okay? Cool. Okay. Yeah, and uh, it's the, uh, these participants we're covering tonight are the participants in the youth 
division. division. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, tell us about it. Yeah. Right. Let's start with the youngest band. This is the Atlanta Blues. This is from the Atlanta Blues Society. <laughs> Sorry. This is called. They are called the uh, Frets on Fire. Uh, they were the youngest act to play in the 2010 International Blues Challenge in Tennessee with the members ranging for 12 years old to 15 years old, sir. And, yeah. <laughs> and Start them young. Yeah, and we have a clip here. This is our their original song. This is called Cell 23, and I will play it now. Okay, <laughs> okay. let's hear them.
So there we go. Fret's on fire and uh, a very young band. Yeah. And uh, they're coming back for their second uh, go-around at uh, IBC Youth uh, Division. Um, and, uh, and they also, that was an original song they did, uh, which is one of the things that uh, judges, when they look at these uh, competitions, they like original material. Uh, and in the blues tradition, and there it was. Uh, now, let's go back to Michael Bourne. Uh, he's got some things to tell us about the importance and role of blues societies, and we'll see how they fit into the picture. And we're back. <laughs> that was quick. Uh, <clears throat> and we're here with Michael Bourne, U.S. blues man, uh, head of the, the uh, Atlanta Boogie Band. And uh, it's a band that uh, won actually two years running as the best blues band in uh, that region of the United States. And they will be representing the Atlanta Blues Society in the International Blues Challenge. I got all that right? Yeah, you did. Okay. Except for it's three out of the last four years. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? Just saying. <laughs> wow. Okay. So you're a dominant band down there. Yeah. Well, they'll, we, you know, it's been a couple different lineups, and I feel really good about this as being the best thing okay. that I've taken up there this year. So. Yeah. Ah, okay. Well, I'm going to be there to listen to yeah. you. So, uh, Now, <clears throat> uh, first of all, uh, you mentioned in, uh, the Atlanta Blues Society, uh, and nowadays, out here in Asia, they're beginning to be blue societies propping up here and there. We have the new uh, Philippine uh, Blue Society that has just been uh, uh, inaugurated and incorporated, and we're up and running. Uh, we've got a, actually a bunch of blue societies in Indonesia. Uh, there's a group in Bangkok. There's a a lot, fairly long-standing one up in uh, Taiwan, there's one in Singapore, there's one in India. So they're sprouting up. Uh, but I'd like your perspective uh, of why is a blue society important? Why should there be such a thing? And what are the benefits for musicians and the listening public? Well, I think uh, it's a place where people who love the music can gather in an organized way and... Um, help each other, you know, promote the music and, um, you know, help get, it gives a network for musicians to find other musicians and for fans to find other fans and to know what, what the, is going on at the clubs and where the music's being played. And, uh, you know, I also think that one of the roles of a blues society should be to, to um, promote the music because if you don't do that then, uh, or help with that, then the music can't go on. And yeah. that's, that becomes a very important task. It didn't used to be as much, but it is now. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> so all of you listening out there, uh, all over Asia, all over the world, see if there's a blues society in your area. If not, make one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, that's another little piece of the puzzle we're covering today in our interview. But once again... Let's uh, take a look at yet another participant in the upcoming International Blues Challenge in Memphis, which will be happening January 31 to February 4. And after we listen to a little more music, we'll come back and talk with Michael one more time. In fact, several more times. Okay. Cool. Okay, yeah. Now, uh, one of the things that Michael pointed to was uh, the importance of blues societies promoting the music. And that uh, also means getting the young people involved. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> the next group that's going to be, uh, that we're going to feature, uh, and it's a group that will be performing in a couple of weeks at the youth division. Um, and this group is a really, really good example of what a blues organization can do. This is the Alabama Blues Project, and <clears throat> this project uh, 
uh, sponsors an after-school blues program. It runs from mid-February through mid-April. And school kids go there and learn the blues. And <clears throat> the Alabama Blues Project actually uh, uh, sponsors a lot of the kids uh, that participate in that. Uh, last year, I think it was over 200 wow. kids that participated in that. And then <clears throat> what happens is uh, during, during that time, they uh, identify who are, you know, the better musicians, yeah. and they end up with an advanced blues band. Yeah. And that's the group that's going to be in Memphis. Are the kids that were the advanced yeah. group out of that program. My goodness, that is the dedicated what, ones. Yes, yeah. the dedicated ones, the ones that got the talent, and the ones that rise to the top. <clears throat> yeah. And gosh, is that a program that is inspiring for a blues society to do? And there are a lot of blues societies that get into that, even out here in Asia. Uh, the Indonesia Blues Association is, it is really the leader in developing the young audience. And they've got programs that get to the young people and build interest in the blues. Whoa. And so that is another part of yeah. the puzzle. Yeah, uh, so Tom, our program is a project of Philippine Blues Society, right? Um, oh, no. You mean getting the rascals or, or uh, our show? Our, our show. show, yeah. Uh, uh, we are uh, friends and <laughs> collaborators, <laughs> okay, okay. but not part of. Okay. Uh, but we stay in very, very close touch with each other because we're all promoting the same thing. Okay, and, okay. And that's, uh, boy, uh, you get me on my soapbox. People that are interested in blues or jazz. We need to work together to advance the music. And um, in any case, uh, let's take a listen to the Alabama Blues Project uh, and its advanced band. Yeah. 
That's the Alabama Blues Project Advanced Band, and they'll be participating in the youth division of the upcoming IBC. Um, now, uh, we want to rush ahead because we still got a lot to cover, and we're going to go back to the interview with Michael Bourne, and he's going to fill us in a bit about the sponsor of IBC, the Blues Foundation. So, Michael, let's get back to our interview. <clears throat> okay, we're back yet again uh, with Michael, and uh, uh, we want to take another step in our exploration of, of the blues world, and particularly kind of the organized blues world. We've talked about blues yeah. societies, and uh, there is also something called the Blues Foundation. Um, and uh, absolutely uh, extremely important organization uh, designed to help keep the blues alive all over the world. And you can find out about it by visiting www.blues.org. Uh, but here's somebody who knows the, the people at the Blues Foundation uh, personally quite well and uh, knows their program, T give us a little background from your perspective of the Blues Foundation. Well, I uh, got involved with them probably six or seven years ago just to, uh, as, uh, uh, to try and help and see what I could do to help and, get, and just to make more contacts. And it went, worked out good for me because I met um, my producer, who is Shemekia Copeland's producer, John Hahn. Wow. And, uh, <laughs> Their organization was in trouble in the early 2000s and nearly almost went away. And uh, Jay, Jay Seelman took over and with an iron fist, much to a lot of people's <laughs> <laughs> disappointment, yeah. got their finances straight. And now it's grown into a uh, um, really great, healthy organization that hosts two, you know, these two great events every year. The the IBCs, which we'll be at, and then also the Blues Music Awards, ah, yes. which grows every year, and um, they had great news this couple months ago that they're, now they're going to have brick and mortar, they're, they'll have a building which will ah. house a, a museum, and wow. and uh, it'll become a tourist destination in addition to everything else. Yeah. They, they do lots of interesting work, They have the, there's the Heart Foundation, and Several things to help. I mean, as you know, in, in the states, you don't health care isn't a right. So, and if you're a musician, you're probably not like a paying attention to your health that much. Yeah. And B, you don't have health care. So there's there's a fund to help musicians who get in trouble. And wow. So they're doing a lot of that kind of good work. And um, these two events are are two of the premier events in the world for yeah. blues. Okay, absolutely. And <clears throat> one of the interesting things about uh, the Blues Foundation is they accept affiliate memberships from blues societies all over the world. Yeah, I, was, I would say like they encourage that. Like Jay was so tickled when I uh, called him and said, well, there's this guy in the Philippines and they want to really, they want to affiliate with you. And they're like the guy was doing cartwheels. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. So uh, they really encourage that, and like that helps the organization grow, which helps the music grow. Yeah, yeah, it's a real nice uh, symbiotic relationship because both have something to help the other uh, enrich the music scene um, and bring the level of playing up, uh, so that uh, we all get better by listening to each other and exchanging ideas and going to competitions and seeing just. You know what are people doing and and learning uh, from each other? Uh, uh, great opportunity. That's the Blues Foundation, uh, folks. And uh, in order to participate in the International Blues Challenge, you have to be sponsored by an affiliate club of the Blues Foundation. Yeah, an affiliate organization. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, we'll come back in a moment. 
and talk a little bit about how the affiliate organizations uh, around the world uh, find the talent to sponsor at IBC. So we'll come back and talk about that next. Okay, and uh, Arvin, uh, let's push ahead. Tell us about the yeah. next band. The representative of the Viltown Blues Association, they are called the Young Blood Blues Band. <laughs> <laughs> this band is anything but an average group of kids getting together to play some music, <laughs> a performing workshop from the PA nonprofit music school, the Up Uptown Music Collective. So they here they are, the Young Blood Blues Band, um, will perform I'm Ready in the Uptown Music... Okay, <laughs> let's yeah. check this out. Oh, check it out. <laughs> the Young Blood Blues Band, and uh, they're sponsored uh, at IBC by the Billtown Blues, Blues. Association. Uh, 
Okay, well, let's move ahead. We're going back to our interview that we had last week with Michael Bourne, and uh, we're going to move on now and learn a little bit more about uh, how to get into the, the competition and what the uh, rules of engagement are. <laughs> so uh, let's go back to Michael. Okay, we're back again and continuing our conversation with Michael Bourne, U.S. blues professional who uh, happened to be in Manila and uh, shared uh, his music with us uh, over at Roadhouse Manila. Um, and uh, I'd like to pick up where we left off. Uh, and uh, we were saying that uh, people that blues challenge are sponsored by a blues society. Uh, That's correct. Okay. And you guys, for example, the Atlanta, the Atlanta Blues Society. Yeah, that's correct. Yes. Okay. Uh, how did they choose you? Um, it's uh, much the same way that the the, the uh, national contest goes. They, you know, they have uh, a competition between bands on the, the local and regional level, and then uh, judges who are in the, you know, DJs and people you'd expect. It's like the American Idol of the blues, essentially. So Yeah, <laughs> that's, a, that's a good way of thinking it's of part it. part one. So, and then you, you, it gets down to the finals, and you, they select the band that they want them to represent. Okay. Based on, uh, you know, four specific categories. Oh, that okay. Are involved. What, what are the categories? I'm going to see if I get this right. <laughs> blues content is number one, as it should be. Uh, vocal vocals, showmanship, um, originality, and um, there's there's one more that I just... Yeah, it's, okay. It's well, that pretty one. much covers the, the waterfront there. But the blues content is That's the big front and center. Part. Yeah, okay. Um, that leads to a sticky question. What is the blues? What do you mean by blues content? That's interpreted differently by everybody, which makes <laughs> <laughs> the judging and the results uh, fun for for uh, people. But I mean, uh, the blues is could, uh, people argue that it's a structure, uh, you know, with the twelve bars, and then there's other people argue that it's a feeling, and um, it could go either way, really. Yeah. But uh, I mean, traditionally, it's it's uh, there's a certain form to the music, and um, I think the the way the music advances is when people push that form and 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 bring their own soul to it. Yeah, that's right. So the form is not absolutely fixed in concrete. No, it's no. you can do things with it. No, I mean if you look, you, you can go back to the beginnings and see that, ah, like okay. little Walter, like it started one way and then ended up really kind of bending things yeah. into okay. uh, a different kind of form. Well, that to me is. Uh, one of the most important things for blues musicians to learn is that it's not all one, four, or five, folks. And as a matter of fact, if you're going to be successful and if you're going to build an audience, you need to reach beyond just one, four, or five. Because if you play that all night long, uh, people's ears get tired. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so anyway, blues content is really important, but it's flexible. And it can grow and evolve. And blues musicians, that is your major task, is to help that evolution of building blues music that is rich, energetic, uh, fun to listen to, and satisfying to the soul. Mm. My goodness, I just gave a sermon. <laughs> and you did too. <clears throat> OK, well, we'll come back. Uh, with uh, one more segment, but again, we're going to listen to one of the participants in the upcoming International Blues Competition in Memphis 2012. We'll be back. Okay, Arvin, well, let's push ahead. Uh, who's the next young band? Okay, this is representative of Ohio, of Ohio, to, of Ohio in the U.S. They, they are sponsored by Black Swamp Blues Society, and they are called the Benny and the Bricks. Okay, let's check them out. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. 
And uh, <clears throat> we're going to press ahead again with our last segment of our interview with uh, Michael Bourne that we did about a week ago. And uh, <clears throat> uh, we're going to have him uh, finish up talking about what are the benefits of participating in all this stuff. And there goes my Big Ben chimes. And uh, on our clock, it actually is toward the top of the hour. So we're going to try to round up this uh, <clears throat> this show uh but anyway let's uh, go back to michael Bourne because he's got some important messages for us okay we're back for our final segment with uh, michael Bourne, a u.s uh professional blues man who's uh visiting here in manila uh actually gave a concert uh with the blue rascals over at the roadhouse uh manila bay uh, and we expect to see Michael back from time to time. Yes. Yeah. Right. Why? Uh, let's see. What could that be? <laughs> <laughs> I got engaged a couple months ago. Ah, to okay. To a Filipino woman. Yeah. Mitra. Okay. And uh, so we're living in both countries for a while. So. Okay. Uh, and uh, we are so uh, grateful to Mitra for capturing you and getting you on the blues scene here and we look forward to, to seeing more of you yeah. uh, but Michael is also uh, I don't know if he remembers he's the one who first came up with the idea hey the Philippines needs to participate in the International Blues Challenge uh, you remember that conversation in the, in the car late one night uh, when you played here in June yeah, I, I mean, I think uh, th the one thing about uh, that event is everybody in the industry that can help somebody is there. The, the producers, record companies, and, you know, that was spurred by, I, I mean, I think the Blue Rascals are just, they're a band that, that needs to be heard beyond the, the, the borders of the country. Mm -hmm. And I thought, like, that's the perfect place for Yeah. Them. Okay. And people, I think people will see Paul and their jaws will drop. Okay. And not only that, not only do the bands get exposed, but the bands get to listen and they're, grow. Yeah, they're exposed, and those guys are all younger guys, so they'll be exposed to stuff that, that like, in a week, they'll be yeah. the blues cram session. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, I'm sure, now that I've just heard what you said, but I'm, I presume you really encourage bands, uh, solo acts, duos from around Asia to get into a blues society and get sponsored and come over, 
right? Yeah, yeah. The international contingent of this um, event is growing every year. So the more, and I think it blues, the time is right for blues to really explode in Asia. So it's, um, you know, it's timeless music and it's about how people feel from the gut. So it's. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, there goes my big bin in my clock, which was supposed to have been turned to silent. Uh, and <laughs> folks, don't get alarmed because it's probably not the top of the hour <laughs> when you are seeing this. Um, but you mentioned one thing, and it's what I wanted to con to conclude uh, the interview with, and that is uh, this idea of blues uh, expanding uh, in Asia and our a lot more exchange. And there are conversations that have just begun, initiated by the Indonesia Blues Association, that is looking toward something that might be called the Asia Blues Union, which will bring together all of the blues societies in Asia and maybe even lead to the Asia Blues Challenge. That would be great. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Jay uh, Suleman of the Blues Foundation has already passed on some information about uh, uh, the path the European Blues Union followed. So things are happening in Asia right now as we speak, and the blues really is spreading, and fascinating things are happening. Uh, now, sometime in February, we'll bring to you a report about what actually happened at the International Blues Challenge 2012. And in the meantime, we wish the Atlanta Blues Boogie Band uh, great success. Appreciate it. Yeah, and we'll see you there in yeah, just a matter of days. Three or four weeks, yeah. Yeah, right. okay. Thank you to Thank Michael Bourne, U.S. Blues Man, uh, leader of the Atlanta Blues Boogie Band. Atlanta, it's Mike Bourne and Atlanta Boogie. Oh, Atlanta Boogie, okay. With the record coming out at the end of the month. A record coming out, and we'll see if we can't uh, somehow uh, get a uh, visualization of that on video and share it with you down the piece. Okay, thank you, Michael. All right, thank you. Yes, indeed. Okay. Well, there you have it. You know, <clears throat> we have really covered some important information mm -hmm. uh, in this program tonight, and <clears throat> uh, it r really suggests some of the things that, that we can all be doing to help push the blues forward in Asia and get the bands here out into the larger world. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and uh, it's very interesting. Just this morning, uh, I was uh, online, and Harry Pochang of the Bandung Blues Society yeah. and a very, very fine harmonica player, <clears throat> he sort of pushed out our way, uh, actually shared it on Pinoy harmonica group on Facebook and he shared uh, some music uh, that he was involved in. Turned out it also featured his 14 year old cousin who is developing into a very fine harmonica player. Wow. <clears throat> and we'll be sharing uh, that video uh, sometime in February. But Harry and I got into a chat online uh, about IBC and the Blues Associations in Indonesia, and, you know, he started getting excited, and he said, you know, I need to go there mm -hmm. and take take my cousin, Ray Harp, and uh, why not, Harry? Yeah, why not? yeah <laughs> do it. <laughs> and uh, so let's get organized. Let's get competitions going. If you can't find a competition in a blues society, find another one. You just found a competition for your band. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, what are you guys doing? We're still practicing. <laughs> yeah, but you're going to be entering a competition? Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, I forgot the name, but I will mention it next time. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> but anyway, uh, competition is is really good. It's fun, and, yeah. and, and it spurs you on to new heights. And uh, Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> yeah. So in any case, uh, that wraps up this hour. Our next show, we're going to continue our focus on the young bands that will be participating in the International Blues Challenge Youth Division. So yeah. catch our next show for even more exciting uh, music. Yeah. Okay. 
And now we're going to do a little business and <laughs> make RJ and you are face radio happy. 